First at four, snow is falling in downtown Detroit. We'll take a look at what you can expect during the rest of the rush hour. Hi, Paula. This is where it changes. This is where it all happens. We're talking about Match Day, and we're not talking about Match.com, but something far more meaningful to a lot of people in this world. Okay, Paula, we'll be looking forward to it. Thank you. But at first, Detroit's police chief confirms new DNA evidence in the murder of Wayne State Police Sergeant Colin Rose. We have a live update on that investigation. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Hi and good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kimberly Gill in today for Karen Drew. First at four, it's been a heartbreaking mystery for months now. Who killed Wayne State Police Sergeant Colin Rose? Well, today, Detroit's police chief calls this man a prime suspect in Rose's murder thanks to new DNA evidence. Local force Rod Maloney is tracking this investigation that's tied to the shootings of two Detroit police officers as well. So, Rod, let's talk about the evidence here. Well, let's talk about it, Kimberly, because, you know, it takes a while for a DNA test to be done, but it only takes about 24 hours if you are of a mind to put it at the front of the line. And that's what Michigan State Police did when they got DNA from Raymond Durham and then tested it against the evidence that was found right here. This is the site of the Sergeant Colin Rose murder. You see the makeshift uh, memorial here. And they're saying that that DNA match put Raymond Durham here at the scene of this murder. Mr. Raymond Durman is now considered a prime suspect in the murder of Wayne State Police Sergeant Colin Rose. The 60-year-old Durham remains in a hospital bed this afternoon, and that is where prosecutors and a judge arraigned him on the following charges. Two counts of assault with intent to murder, two counts of resisting and obstructing police causing serious impairment, felon in possession of a firearm, and five counts of felony firearm violations. These charges only pertain to the gun battle he allegedly waged with Detroit police Wednesday night, where they say he put two officers in the hospital. Chief Craig admitting DNA samples left in a flashlight and a glove found at the Sergeant Rose murder scene last November came back as matching Durham's DNA. Thus, they believe, putting Durham at the scene at the time of the Rose murder. This is a first step. This matter, as it relates to Sergeant Colin Rose, has not been presented to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. For her part, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy put out this statement after today's arraignment, quote, we were able to charge this case today because of the round-the-clock collaboration with the Detroit Police Department, the Michigan State Police, and the many others who worked tirelessly on this case. Any time a police officer is injured is a stark reminder of how much law enforcement puts on the line every minute of every day, end quote. So who is Raymond Durham? And how is it that he might have found himself here at this scene? That is something that we're going to take a look at on Local 4 News at 5. We're also going to be talking to other people involved in this and get their reaction to this uh, arrest that uh, was made and the arraignments that were held today and also the possibility of more arraignments coming down the line. Kimberly, back to you. Yeah, and Rod, I, you mentioned talking to people. I know you get a chance to talk to a lot of people, maybe some residents out there in the neighborhood. Have they been able to tell you kind of what they think about this arrest? Well, you know, it's interesting, you know, this murder that happened right here of Sergeant Colin Rose really has rocked this neighborhood. We spent 45 minutes to an hour just trying to talk to the people who live here. One of the women that I interviewed the night of the murder and they're all reluctant to come out and say anything because this murder has so changed the nature yeah. of this neighborhood. They don't want to talk about it. Are they happy that there's been an arrest? Absolutely, but they certainly don't want to go on camera and talk about it. Right. Again, you can understand that. Okay, Rod, we look forward to your report coming up at five o'clock. Thanks a lot. Well, the Flint water crisis is back in the spotlight today, but this time there is some good news. The EPA has approved $100 million in federal funding for the city. $51.5 million will be immediately available for work on service lines and corrosion control, while the remaining money will be used once the city and state complete some technical reviews. We'll keep you posted on that. All right, time now for our first look at the forecast. And Andrew, we're seeing a few flakes flying around in uh, Metro Detroit here. Uh, spring right around the corner. <laughs> That's right, Kimberly, and welcome back. Happy St. Patrick's. Day. Yes, we're looking at a mixture of raindrops and snowflakes that are out there. Some of it is lighter, like here in Macomb County, these light areas of blue, the areas of green, those are where we have some raindrops as well. You can see that around Marine City. But in these darker areas of blue, especially snow showers, are coming down at a pretty good rate. And we're also looking at a little freezing rain mixing in in these areas of orange. So be careful with a little bit of ice and a 
little bit of snow. There are no alerts out or anything like that, but it is treacherous enough to slow you down. So factor on extra time depending on where you're going. And we still have more moisture off to the west that is yet to move through as we go over these next few hours into the early evening. So up until about nine o'clock, we'll see this on and off snow shower and uh, rain uh, activity that will occur. We've got 34 degrees right now. We're hovering right around the freezing mark depending where you are across the metro area. So it remains slippery for now. More slippery this weekend. We'll talk about that. Your full seven day forecast coming up. OK, Andrew, well, President Trump just held a press conference with German Chancellor Angela Merkel hanging over everything the president does or questions about his claims that the Obama administration wiretapped Trump Tower. Jason Colthorpe has a story for us in the newsroom. And Jason, did the president talk specifically about wiretapping today? Uh, almost, Kimberly, I think is the answer. The president wasn't directly asked whether he stands by his original claims that former President Barack Obama wiretapped Trump Tower. When a German reporter touched on the topic, though, President Trump deflected with this response. As far as uh, wiretapping, I guess, by, you know, this past administration, at least we have something in common, perhaps. The president was referring to U.S. surveillance of German chancellor of the German chancellor revealed by Edward Snowden back in 2013. The president wasn't pressed any further on this. Just yesterday, two high ranking senators say they found no evidence President Trump was under surveillance, while others believe it's also time for the president to produce some hard evidence here. Frankly, uh, unless you can produce some some pretty uh, compelling proof, then I think the president, uh, you know, um, uh, President Obama is owed an apology in that regard because, uh, you know, if he didn't do it, uh, we shouldn't be, you know, reckless in accusations that he did. This all sets the stage for Monday when FBI Director James Comey will publicly testify for the first time about the president's wiretap claims. So, Kimberly, this issue far from resolved. We'll be following it, though. That we will. The president also talked about uh, health care reform a little bit. We'll talk more about that at 5 o'clock. And, Jason, we'll see you then as well. Thanks a lot. All right, first of all, we're also t uh, tracking stories, making headlines around the world. New York police have arrested a man accused of stealing an ambulance and running over two female EMTs. Police say the women were responding to a situation in the Bronx last night when the 25 year old hopped into their ambulance and tried to drive away. One woman was dragged under the vehicle and was killed. Her partner remains in critical condition. In Peru, devastating mudslides have killed dozens of people. Residents have jumped onto rooftops to escape the muddy water pouring into their homes and neighborhoods. Some had to use rope to pull themselves to safety. Intense rains have slammed the South American nation for three days now. All of Peru's schools have closed during this crisis. Here at home, March Madness has a very different meeting for medical students at Wayne State University. It's match day, a day that can change the entire course of their lives. Paula Tutman was there as future doctors were drafted, and she found one young woman desperately hoping to find her perfect match. So it's student match day for Wayne State University's medical school. This is where students find out where they're going to spend the next three to seven years. And they're going to find out now in five, four, three, two, one. For these students, it has taken Herculean, Olympic caliber brain work to get here. In two weeks, they'll be doctors. In July, they will be residents. But first, one more hurdle to jump, match day across the nation at noon. Graduating medical students at schools all over the U.S. are opening envelopes. It is life altering for these students who have performed athleticism in their academics. Five, four, three, two, one. Especially for Cicely, whose first choice is University of Michigan Medical Center. She and her husband just bought a house in Southfield. Their first child is due in April, and any residency other than U of M will change everything. Well, if I go out of state, then it could potentially mean us selling the house and having to settle down and him finding a new job. But I think we're fluid. I mean, we absolutely want to stay in Michigan, but... You know, her career is, is most important to our family, so uh, we're, we're willing to pick up and, and go where the career leads us. And when the moment of truth arrives... Uh, my name is Samantha Habhab, and I matched at a one for my transitional year in Presby Eye Institute for Ophthalmology. I'm so proud. This moment is amazing for me. I'm so happy for her. 800 people on pins and needles for 267 medical students awaiting their futures. My name is Jordan Edberg going into anesthesia. 
I'm going to Stanford. They will remember their time at Wayne State University Medical School with humor. My name is Steve Nye. I'm going into internal medicine. I'm going to UC San Diego. First day on a neurosurgery rotation, and uh, I, uh, you know, felt that my pants were really loose. It was the first time I've ever worn scrubs, and literally within the first two minutes of this five-hour surgery, my scrub pants just fell right off. Their parents will be proud. I'm Brian Squires, and I'm going to William Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak for radiation oncology. My name is Amy Jenkins. I matched at Pine Rest um, in Grand Rapids for psychiatry. Precisely the world is perfect today. So I'm able to stay in Michigan with uh, my husband and our family. She and her classmates will be our doctors. Paula Tutman, Local 4. What an exciting and emotional time. All right, thanks, Paula. We appreciate that. Still ahead first at four, we have smart glasses, smart watches, and now we'll show you something else you can use to control your phone. We'll have that coming up. Also ahead, spring break on a budget, a list of destinations where you get a lot more for your vacation dollars. Hi, Doc. They've been dubbed the three basketeers. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. I'll show you what three friends decided to do together to make life a little easier for their wives. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. I'm Nick Monticelli in Fraser, where work continues 24-7 on the repairs on the sinkhole. But now they're looking at issues outside of this. And finally, they're getting an idea of how much all this could cost the county residents. Okay, Nick. In good health, did you know right now is the most popular time of the year to get a vasectomy? That's what it says. I didn't make this up. Let's get over to Dr. Frank McGeorge to find out why. Doc? It makes sense if you think about it. A lot of men schedule the procedure so they can spend their recovery watching the NCAA basketball tournament. One group of friends took it a step further and scheduled their vasectomies for the same day. I can't believe this is happening yeah, right know. now. <laughs> John, Paul, and Basilio have been close friends for years. We all have two kids. They're all about the same age. And I think we were, we've talked many times while changing diapers on the back of cars and stuff. Lately, those conversations focused on a topic most guys tend to avoid. Men don't really talk about health concerns together and let alone something as intimate as saying, I'm going to go get a vasectomy. Hey, you want to come along? But that's exactly what these three did. So then I'm like, you know, I'm going to take one for the team. So I decided I would do it. You know, if we're all going to do it, might as well do it all together. You know, make an experience out of it. So the three Vasketeers, as they've been dubbed. The Vasketeers. <laughs> made back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back appointments. A very quick 10-minute, 15-minute procedure. Only one in 10 eligible men get vasectomies in the U.S., half the rate of men in Canada or the U.K. Compared to sterilization surgeries for women, vasectomies are quicker, safer, and they require less recovery time. We're also collaborating on how we can milk this as much as possible so we don't have to do chores around the house. The three Vasketeers urge more men to consider the procedure. Their wives agree. After we've gone through so much with delivering babies, um, it's just a nice gesture to have a very mini procedure and have that taken for, care of for us. Typical recovery time is about two to three days on the couch, which is long enough to enjoy a lot of basketball. Now, vasectomy appointments, interestingly, also spike around other big sporting events, in particular, the Masters. I guess there's a lot of golf fans out there, too. Back to you. So, okay, Doc, we appreciate that. Well, if you're looking for uh, a spring break vacation on a budget, TripAdvisor has some suggestions for you. The travel website found the average traveler's budget is about $2,500, and it found Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is the best buy because you can spend about 12 nights there versus just five in Cancun. Other budget-friendly spots, Anaheim, California, Orlando, San Diego, and New Orleans. Hmm. All right, back here in Michigan. <laughs> if, you love, if you love some snow and ice. There you go. Come, perfect come here, too. Here. Detroit's wide open, everybody. You're right. <laughs> and happy St. Patrick's Day to you, too. The same to you. Looking beautiful <laughs> and green. Thank you. Thanks. I would wear green, but a little inside baseball thing. In chroma key, if I wore green, it would key out and i go invisible. There you go. That, that's explaining <laughs> it for the folks at home. I figured that's what it was, but still, we, we like to celebrate it, and happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there watching. Thank you very much, Kimberly. And what is visible are those raindrops and snowflakes that we're seeing around. You can see that here on 4Live Radar, showing up here in 
blue where it's a little bit lighter uh, just to our north, north of 8 Mile. But in these dark areas of blue, I'll zoom in a bit closer here on Monroe County. Good afternoon, Dundee, and happy St. Patrick's Day down to Lambertville. Getting some pretty decent snow showers where we could see visibility reduced greatly. Up and down Route 23 could be more slippery also, especially on ramps, bridges, and overpasses. So although we don't have any alerts from Monroe County into Washtenaw County, you can see the Ann Arbor area too. You still want to be careful out there on the roads because it can be treacherous even when there are no snow advisories up and this leading edge of new snow that's going to cut through portions of Wayne County between now and about 440. So within the next 15 to 20 or 30 minutes. So be on guard, even though we're seeing cloudy skies and no additional snow yet here in Detroit, we will within the next 15 minutes or so. And we have some more off to our west. This, this back edge right here where there's still some development happening has yet to move across the area and we will do so as we go through the rest of this evening. 34 degrees currently, but it feels like it's in the 20s, so make sure you bundle up. Temperatures are key. It's slightly above freezing in many spots, so even if we're seeing some snowflakes, they are melting pretty quickly on sidewalks and also on uh, on paved areas, including roads. So we have 34 degrees for our friends in Redford and also around Livonia, but where you see 32 degrees right here in Ann Arbor or 31 in Dundee, chances are the snow, or we've seen some freezing rain also, is sticking to those hard surfaces, and you could see some slow slushy or icy conditions between now and about 9 o'clock. After 9, 10 o'clock tonight and overnight, we'll see a break in a lot of that snow and rain action. But by tomorrow afternoon, we're still looking at some pretty unstable air that's around. Not talking about heavy snow showers that will still be around, but some light raindrops, light snowflakes on and off before we see drier conditions come Sunday. So chilly conditions for tonight. We're going to still stay right around freezing as we go through tonight and during the overnight hours. A slippery evening for sure as the uh, snow and rain start to wind down after midnight. Sunset this evening is at at 742 during the day tomorrow. Again, a little bit slippery, but not enough to cancel any plans or really change them drastically. Just make sure you uh, stay careful on the roads, both driving and walking. Of course, 44 is going to be the high, so we will make it above freezing for tomorrow with a little snow in the morning, a little wintry mix in the afternoon. Sunnier skies on Sunday. That's the best out of the two days. 46 degrees. First day of spring. It looks like Kimberly on Monday with a high around 50 before it gets chillier the rest of next week. Andrew, thanks so much and still ahead. The votes are in and it's a monopoly shakeup. We'll show you the new token for the classic board game and which tokens are getting the boot. But up first, they call it a smart jean jacket. What it could do for you and how much you'll pay to get one. That's next. Okay, welcome back everybody. In today's trending stories, we're getting our first look at a so-called smart jean jacket. Google and Levi's have teamed up to create a jacket that controls your phone by using your sleeve. You can access Google Maps, switch songs, and make phone calls all by using the cuff of the jacket. It's been in the works since 2015 and uses special touch sensitive fabric. The $350 jacket should hit stores sometime this fall. Okay, well the votes are in and these are your newest Monopoly tokens. A penguin, a rubber ducky, and a T-Rex. We told you about the online vote to choose the new tokens a few weeks ago. Just under 4.3 million votes were counted from 146 countries. And because these tokens are in, that means these tokens are out. The boot, the thimble, and the wheelbarrow were the least popular. You'll start seeing the new game pieces sometime in August. And get ready for this. Melissa McCarthy is returning to Saturday Night Live as a guest host May 13th. She's been getting rave reviews for playing White House spokesman Sean Spicer in recent cameo, cameo appearances. The show just announced the lineup for the season's final shows. Louis C.K. will host uh, April 8th, followed by SNL, uh, SNL alum Jimmy Fallon. Chris Pine, as I said, Melissa McCarthy, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson will host the season's final show. That'll be on May 20th. All right, still ahead, a St. Patrick's Day parade in Michigan that gets attention all around the world. And in this case, size does matter. We'll have that when we come back. Hollywood has come to the Motor City. Crews, cameras, and A-list actors now filming in Detroit. The cast is phenomenal. Um, you know, we've got an all-star cast of Matthew McConaughey, Bruce Dern. The movie, White Boy Rick, the Oscar-nominated producer speaking only with Local 4. That trained FBI agents and, and law enforcement police officers would actually uh, manipulate a 14-year-old kid to the extent that they did. 
and the one shocking place Matthew McConaughey visited in Michigan that will have everyone buzzing tonight at 11 on Local 4. All right, finally, first at four, the world's shortest St. Patrick's Day parade went through a small <laughs> West Michigan city today. That's right, Kimberly. The parade started around 1055 this morning in Conklin, Michigan at the near Grand Rapids. Minutes later, it was over. The parade route is only 150 yards with more than 100 Conklin residents walking down the city's main street there. Looks like a lot of fun. No <laughs> word yet on how long the festivities after that lasted, though. Probably a lot longer than the parade. And you got to end with a tuba. There you go. <laughs> All right, we'll see you for the news at five in just a bit. Inside Edition is next.